你有说星期几比较方便发货的？Welcome to another episode of Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke. And I'm Sabrina. And today we are in the culinary capital of Taiwan, Tainan City. We are going to be taking you for a full day of eating, sampling all kinds of traditional Taiwanese street foods. Right now we are at an extremely busy morning market. It's very traditional. It's called the Yamuliao Market. And we're really hungry for breakfast. We're going to go inside and see what they have. Let's go. We just picked up our first snack from one of the really popular stalls within the market itself and they're selling all things braised. So we got some braised duck, which is their specialty. You can see uh, we've got duck wings only here in this bag. So let me pull one of these out. Um, just four wings for a hundred Taiwan dollars, which is about, uh, I think about three dollars US. They look pretty good. They are served cold and uh, they smell really good. Let me try. This is quite a traditional um, snack. I don't know where to approach, but I'm going to go in. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. So the texture of that is quite interesting. It's kind of halfway between gelatinous and chewy. I got a pretty big chunk of meat there. The flavor is nice. It's actually a little bit salty and a little bit of sort of a traditional five spice, almost cinnamony flavor. I wish it was served a little bit warmer. It's kind of completely cold and the presentation definitely isn't pretty, but the flavor is good. Mm. There's not too much meat on there. Mm. Yeah. So the braised flavor is quite strong, but it's not like sweet at all. Like sometimes you get some really sweet braised meats or tofus, but this one is actually more savory than it is sweet. Tainan is a very traditional, authentic Taiwanese city, and this market is very reflective of that. Very uh, Taiwanese, a little bit gritty, but really fun and interesting to walk around. Lots of things to see and lots of foods to eat. Hey! 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 <laughs> Those little duck wings were definitely not enough to fill us up for breakfast and we spotted something else on our way in that we're heading back to now and they are selling Taiwanese style meatballs. We are sitting down now at the second place that uh, I mentioned is selling Taiwanese style meatballs. So we've got our plate here. Chinese it's called bao wan and you can see that it's kind of in this glutinous uh, rice flour wrapper and it's been stuffed with looks like pork and I think this one may have seafood in it as well because I can see a little bit, I think, yeah, there you go. A little bit of shrimp, I believe. So it's all swimming in this very thick uh, sweet sauce. It's sort of like a brown sauce, very typical uh, Taiwanese, but also there's quite a few condiments on the table. So the first one here is this massive jar of garlic. So let me grab a little bit of garlic, sprinkle it on my Taiwanese meatballs. There's sort of just like a different variation of a dumpling. And then one more thing that I like to put on is uh, chili, but we also have wasabi if you do like wasabi, but I'm just gonna go for a little bit of chili on here as well. A little bit of that. And let me scoop one of these up, try it out. That is surprisingly delicious. It is really flavorful, even though it doesn't look like much. The texture on the outside is sort of like an even creamier version of mochi. And then the inside, the meat is very lean, so it's contrasting nice with that creamy uh, outer layer. And then a little bit of a seafood flavor, and that chili sauce isn't very uh, spicy at all, but it's got an, a little bit of a kick to it. 
but it's just swimming in sauce. Check that out. Wow. Mm. So bao wan is actually a very traditional Taiwanese snack. We haven't had it in such a long time and I'm kind of upset that we've missed out on this. I forgot how good it was. I do like the seafood in it. It gives it kind of like a new dimension of flavor. Wow, that was super tasty. If I had to give you my first impression of the Yamulio market, this place is crazy. It is packed out. Uh, I'm having a hard time navigating through, but uh, really great market, super traditional. We are heading to a place that sells a certain type of dessert. Uh, it's really famous, and um, we're gonna go see actually how it's made. So down this little tiny alleyway here in Tainan, there is a one-of-a-kind snack that I've never tried before. I'm not sure if they made the machine or the contraption that they're actually cooking it with themselves, but basically she spreads some batter in and then turns the whole contraption itself. And when she makes the turn movement, it actually flips all the individual uh, little cookie fryers. And then she uh, scrapes off the one that's finished, chops it up, and then you have the uh, Jin being the little cookie that we're about to try. Really unique. I definitely don't think anyone else in Taiwan is doing it in this particular way. Super cool and such a cool shop too. We've got our bag of the cookies now and this place is so popular. We've just been standing here for maybe two minutes and they've already had tons of customers. You're only allowed to buy two bags per person because they're so popular. So let me try to rip this open here and I'm gonna grab one of these cookies. And you can see it's in a really unique shape too. So it's sort of flat, but then she's folded it over and then it kind of makes almost like a figure eight. Mm. Mm. Oh man, that is really good. It's almost like halfway between a fortune cookie and like a Ritz cracker because it's kind of sweet and savory at the same time. It's much crunchier than uh, both of those, but it is very reminiscent of, of a fortune cookie. These are so addictive. I could see why people come and just try to get as many bags as possible and they had to set a limit. This would be so good with tea, I think. It's, it's just perfect. It's crunchy, it's sweet, it's savory. It's absolutely delicious. In such a cool way that she's making it. I know. Real cool to watch. That is so unique and really, really rare. It's got to be one of a kind. I don't think anyone is producing the cookie in that particular way. And it's not a gimmick though. The flavor is really, really good. So what are we doing now, Sabrina? At the end of this lane, there's a little temple that we spotted. So we're going to go have a look and see what it's about. So this temple is so peaceful just down the same alleyway that uh, we found the cookie shop. And this is really why I love Tainan. It's very traditional, very unique and peaceful. You don't see any other tourists around, but the people are friendly, the food is good, and the sights are beautiful. So let's head now to get some Luro Fan. <laughs> We are at our next stop today and we are having my all-time favorite Taiwanese dish, Lu Rou Fan, which is uh, braised pork on rice. So this place is extremely popular. It's right on the sidewalk. Uh, my favorite place to eat Lu Rou Fan is in Taipei, in New Taipei City. Uh, we made a video about that place in the past, but then after making that, a couple of you guys told me that this spot in Tainan was really, really good. So I'm excited to try it out. We have our bowl here. It is quite a small bowl, but you can see that this is just super melt in your mouth pork belly fat on top. 
I don't even see any meat. I think it's only fat, and it is quite a small bowl. I can't really believe how small it is, but Tainan is known for its uh, small uh, snacks, and you can also see that this is very unique. I've never seen cilantro in uh, Luro Fan before. So we also have a bowl of veg over here, which is uh, bamboo shoots, one of my all-time favorite, and just uh, lightly pickled and boiled. Oh wow, you get hung. Oh man, to say that melts in your mouth is a total understatement. I didn't even feel the texture of that pork belly. It literally just felt like liquid on top of rice. It completely soaks into that rice. There's a nice braised flavor. And then also the cilantro gives it sort of like a fresh kick. I've never had cilantro with Luro Fan before. It's really unique. Let's try these uh, bamboo shoots too. One of my all time favorite veg. Also very good. Sort of lightly sour from being pickled and they still retain their crunch. But really, that's all about this. This is just definition of ugly delicious. So good, so fatty, so delicious. Oh my. Wow. We are definitely sufficiently full after that, but that is really, really good. Tainan is just full of these little snacks you can just spend the whole day eating, but uh, we definitely need to take a little bit of a break. So there's a nice little beach here in Tainan called Anping Beach. We're just gonna head there now. As you can see, we've come down to the beach here in Tainan. It's not necessarily the white sand, crystal clear water beaches that uh, you may dream of, but it is quite beautiful. There are quite a few oyster farms out on the horizon, but there's all kinds of area to play on the beach or in the water. Um, we are just uh, soaking in the views. The cloud cover is up, so it's not so hot, and it's really just pleasant to hang out here. So we're having a great time here at the Anping Beach here in Tainan. If you want the best beaches here in Taiwan, you have to go another three or four hours south to Kending, or you can head to the east coast where there's some really beautiful beaches. But as I mentioned, there are so many oysters farms I think they're oyster farms um, out on the horizon they just go on forever and ever, ever and ever we just saw on the drone I really couldn't believe my eyes so I think we're gonna take a little bit of a break now and catch back up with you guys tonight we're gonna head to the night market So we've come to the night market here in Tainan. This is called the Wushang Night Market, one of our favorite ones. We've been here a couple times before, but it is absolutely crazy Saturday night here. The amount of scooters alone in the parking lot is an indication that this place is packed out, but it is worth it because the food here is awesome. So let's go find some snacks. This night market is quite large, but it is not the largest in Tainan. The Tainan Flower Night Market is the biggest and most popular, but this one's got a lot more of a local, authentic Taiwanese vibe to it, which is playing nice with the theme of today. Lots of good looking food here. We are sitting down at a stall now. We could smell this place from the other side of the market and they are selling one of my favorite night market snacks and that is a pork bone medicinal broth soup. So we've got our bowl here. You can see that this place actually serves quite a bit of meat on their bones, which isn't the norm. Usually you'll get this soup and there won't be any meat on the bones. And then you've got this nice brown colored broth. The indication if this is good or not is whether this broth is very flavorful. So let's try it out. Hmm. Oh wow, it's actually not very flavorful. Usually you get this really strong sort of uh, cinnamony, almost licorice-y star anise flavor, 
but I can't really taste it in this one. It's very, very light and just a little bit salty. It's actually kind of flavorless, so that's kind of unfortunate, but let's try some of the meat here. Uh, that is at least one thing that this place has going for it is that there's a lot of meat in this soup, so let's try that. Mm. Oh, super, super tender pork rib meat. Wow, that makes up for it a little bit, but unfortunately, yeah, that broth definitely isn't up to par with some of the ones I've had before. Fortunately, to make up with the lack of flavor from the uh, broth, there is a lot of meat, and we have this uh, fermented bean chili paste on the side here, so I'm gonna pour a little bit in this tray, and I'm gonna go in for a piece of meat with some of that chili sauce. Let me grab some of this off. Let's try that. Mm. Yeah, I always love that bean paste sauce. It's almost got like a sort of sour, almost like a tomato-y flavor. And then very, very slight spice, but not spicy really whatsoever. Not bad, but definitely not my favorite. So what do we got next, Sabrina? This is one of my all-time favorite things you can get in night markets in Taiwan. It is the giant ice cream, maybe the tallest ice cream in the world. And uh, this woman's gonna serve it to us. I'm gonna order half chocolate, half vanilla. So I claim this is the biggest ice cream in the world, and I think I was deceived, but that's okay. <laughs> it's uh, still huge. We've definitely seen bigger, though. We've seen bigger, but I mean, this is still more than you need. So let's give it a try. What kind of a baby bite was that with such a huge ice cream? I'm not, I'm not turning this into something that it shouldn't be. <laughs> so um, left there. It's pretty good. Um, it's not like real ice cream, but uh, it tastes good and it cools you off because it's like super hot outside right now. But uh, you want to give it a try? Yeah. That was a baby bite too. Mm. Yeah, definitely not real ice cream. But it's tasty, it'll cool you off, and um, it's a great way to end a day of eating in Tainan. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode. What an incredible day of eating here in Tainan, one of my favorite cities in all of Taiwan, home to some just incredible food. Just a quick stop at the night market tonight for a couple little treats. Uh, pretty good. We love this place, and everything we ate today was delicious, but I want to know what you guys think look the most delicious. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And some information for traveling to Tainan, you can find down in the description box of this video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.